The most important thing for us is not to lose this game against uh, against um, Central Africa Republic. So I'm going to go there, obviously, with a very uh, a, a tough team and a strong team and a mentally strong team. But also we're going to go there to try and win the game. But under all circumstances, we mustn't lose it. Because the key to this whole us qualifying, besides the knockout stages later on, I'm talking about getting through this important part now, is the fact that we have to make sure we don't lose this game against Carr. And if we don't lose this game, if we win it or get a point against Carr, we're very, very much alive still. Because the important and the most important game is going to be against Ethiopia. To get that game, to get to that stage, we have to make sure we don't lose against Carr. We have to draw or beat them. And then when we play uh, Ethiopia, it's a matter of an, a must-win situation. You know, to be in a must situation where we have to win, have to win, have to win, have to win four games, you know, we have to plan it properly. So we're going to plan to try and get the points against Carr. But whatever happens a draw or a win against Carr will be in the same situation because we need now to make sure that we beat Ethiopia because Ethiopia are two points in front of us at this stage obviously the big big game because if we win and Carr win we're still going to be, I mean Ethiopia win we're still going to be two points behind and going into that game against Ethiopia is um, going to be a must win situation if we beat them we go one point in front of them depending so I'm just assuming at the moment that they're going to win their next game and we're going to win our next game so the Ethiopian game is of course the game that's going to make the decider because we're either going to win the game and go one point above them or they're going to beat us and go five points again above us with one game to go you know so obviously it's a must win situation you know, we don't want to get there and find we've got to travel by a bus for six hours and the bus breaks down and gets a puncher because we're using the wrong buses. So he's, got, he's going to go there, do all the logistics for us and make sure that everything is right. I'm talking about hotel, I'm talking about traveling, I'm talking about the bus, I'm talking about training facilities because we're going to be spending a bit of time in Cameroon. Our plan is we've arranged a, a match against Lesotho on the 1st of June. So the Nedbank Cup final is on the, is on the 25th. After the 25th, the squad will be going into a camp and we'll be in a camp right up until the 30th. On the, on the 30th, or the, we're not sure yet, the 28th or the 30th or 29th, we'll be departing. Let's say the 29th, if that's what I've got here. The 29th, we'll be departing for Lesotho. We'll play the match in Lesotho. We'll come back to Johannesburg for two days. And then on the 4th of, on the 4th of June, we'll depart <coughs> for Cameroon. And we'll be there right up until um, our game against Carr. And also our game against Ethiopia. We'll stay there until the 13th. We'll depart on the 14th to have the training session in Ethiopia on the 15th. And the 16th we play Ethiopia. We were going to go to uh, Saudi, Arabia. Saudi Arabia. But the, yeah. the travelling times are too long. We have to leave at like uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. So it means the players won't sleep, so it was quite so we had to make sure. So with the, with, the guy, with the game moved to Cameroon now, it's turned out to be a much easier route for us travelling-wise. So we'll play car on the 9th. Then on the 10th, we'll stay, back in, we'll stay in Cameroon. We'll train the 10th, the 11th, the 12th and the 13th. The possibility of the squad that go to, goes to Lesotho will be the squad that's going to be, obviously, you know, so then I might have to announce the team a little bit early. I'll be taking 25 players with me because, you know, I don't want to have a, have a situation where I get two or three injuries and then I'm going to call a player very, very late, you know, to come up to Ethiopia. Barney is working on that at the moment. Obviously, uh, we certainly hope so. But, I mean, they might, they, they'll probably be here the day after or the next day if they don't all make it because some of them are playing games. But the important part is to get them into their camp. I mean, we, our, this is our preparation for two of the most important games, you know, to qualify for the World Cup. And that's to have the, and these players will be here, whether they play in the Lesotho game or not. It'll probably be locally based players playing the Lesotho game because these guys will be traveling over that weekend, you know. But the important thing is to get them into camp, get them in. First of all, I never requested any contract extension. I've read that. I haven't requested any contract extension at all. Okay? The Minister of Sport and the, 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 the President spoke about that. Okay? So I've got no problems at the moment. Okay? But I certainly didn't request a contract until 2018. Stephen Pino was completely out of my mind, completely, and I don't even, even think about him. Look, you know, I've always said this, the door is always open for any player, okay? Um, what happens, let me ask you the question, what happens if we qualify for the World Cup and Stephen Pino comes back and says, I want to play for the national team again? You know, then, you, then I'm, then I'm uh, catch-22 because this is not my team. Stephen Pino is a great player, we know that. Now, do we 
shut the door on him and say, no, we don't want you back in the national team because you turned us down before? Or do we open up our arms and say, we embrace you because you are South African? You know, so it's always, it's always a catch-22 situation. But right now, I haven't even thought of Stephen Pinar because he's made, it, made his commitment to, uh, to, his, to his team in Everton. He's retired from international football. And I don't even think about Stephen Pinar. He often sends me an SMS and, you know, say, well done, coach, or how's that, whatever. And, and I correspond with him. I've got no problem. But he's retired from international football, you know, so I, I don't even think about him in that sense.